What's going on guys? Vic VP back with the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, Joshua's Global VR Pin. Yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> Alright, so if you haven't been following me on Instagram, which I always say it, it is my new plug, you should be because if you did, you would have seen the progress on this. I did a little bit also on the YouTube shorts, but you would have seen that this cabinet right here, I completed it in one week. That is insane. Uh, it's just an insane number, especially when it comes to V-Pin. Granted, yes, I didn't build the cabinet and all that. It's mostly for the wiring and all that, but I'm very proud of myself to say that I was able to complete this within a week, even though I do have the four players still up waiting on artwork on that, and I have a couple more projects coming up. I just got this in my hands, and I, had, I told myself, I said, you know what, let's bang it out. And sure enough, in one week, I completed it. Obviously, when this goes out on YouTube, it is more than a week, so no biggest not a week. It is a week uh, I set my schedule and videos to go out at a certain time. That's just whatever it is. But again, I am so happy to show off the Global VR Ultra Pin Retrofit. That's what it is. That's what it is. Retrofit. It took an existing cabinet and retrofitted it to current 2022. I don't want to say specs, but almost specs and all that. <laughs> so this one's really cool. I'm really excited to really kind of show it off. A couple of pros, a couple of cons. It is my first ever approach or visually seeing a 32 inch pinball machine. I, I'll make a couple of comments. Again, it's nothing towards Josh. It's something maybe for me personally, but there are also people that are looking at smaller scale, more cost effective pins. I will give you my, pers my personal like opinions and everything on this. Again, this is my first time ever doing a 32 inch. Very unique, everything about this is just unique as hell. If you did not see the last video, I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown. Basically, Joshua supplied me with everything. Everything you see here, he gave it to me. I did not swipe my credit card once. Basically, the deal was, hey Vic, take this cabinet and wire up the DOF and the solenoids. Again, I do have a video on this, so you'll see it all. I do want to bring that out that I was only commissioned to wire this thing up and kind of organize the PC. No, he is not getting what you see here. He's not going to be getting the tables. He does not get the media. I can't stress that enough because I do not want to piss off the pinball community and all that. I do not sell the tables and the media. I will have popper installed on this, but that is it. There is no pre tables on it. There's no FX3 tables. Nothing, there is no table worthy. Right now, currently, yes, this is my drive. So I do copy and paste my files into this and obviously it is never a simple copy and paste. Please get that through your head. It is not a simple copy and paste. There is a lot of configuring to do, but basically I do that so that I could fully test the computer out and get everything organized. I basically erase all my table files and now he's able to go ahead download from VP Universe or VP Forums, put it into the table files and all that. His database will be different than mine because table names are named differently online. So just keep that in mind, please. I can't stress that enough. He is basically getting a stepping stone or basically the first step to a VPIN. He's gonna have to do the hard work of doing the tables and the media and all that. Again, again, there are a lot of authors and artists and you got Adam Walsh that makes the Apron, DMDs, I'm not here to piss anybody off. I give them big shout outs and kudos and everything because, for example, Adam, he makes beautiful full DMD, you know, overlays, underlays, and I don't get commissioned on that. That's not what I do. That's not the objective of this hobby. I'm just here to help people get into the hobby, meaning take a cabinet, take the PC, and go ahead, put your tables in and all that. I will help and guide you as far as how to install tables and how to put them and organize them. But after you get like one or two down, you'll really understand it. If you do go back to my original VPIN videos, I personally downloaded each of my tables. VPX is the main emulator that I enjoy and I love. Future Pinball, if Terry Red was not working on Future Pinball on his tables, I would not have Future Pinball on my pin at all, but because of him, I do have Future Pinball. My main focus is VPX. And you got also FX3 and FX2. Me personally, they are kind of cartoonish. They're not really like 
the pinball machines that I enjoy, like the originals and you know the real pinball machines, but they do give a modern kind of twist on pinball to get people active. So they are fun. FX2 and FX3 are on my table, but they're not played as frequently or as much as my VPX table. Enough of that, let's focus on the table itself. Let's take a look at everything. Again, I was not commissioned to make this thing aesthetically pleasing, but I couldn't, it, I couldn't find it in my heart to give him this pin with like the gapes and the gaps. And if you do see from the original video, I'll probably post a screenshot here. You could see his back box, the way he gave it to me with this big gap and he didn't have the third screen and he was playing around with it. I, I just, I couldn't do it in my heart. I couldn't. Am I pleased? Am I happy with what I did? Yes. Would I personally do it if you commissioned me? No. If I was commissioned for this, the whole back box honestly would look way different. It wouldn't really have kind of like these edges bulging out. Again, I was not commissioned for the aesthetics on this, but I am a good human being. I could not give it to him bare. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I'm going to see now, I might cut this, but I'm going to see right now, maybe I have a video from my YouTube or from my Instagram when I was making it. You could see, I have the third screen here, but you could see visually the sides and the gap and there was like this, there's like a, a, a three quarter inch piece on the bottom. It was visible. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. I said, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just too nice, I guess you could say. And I had to at least make it a little bit worthwhile and a little bit, it had to look good. I mean, I, I really couldn't leave that gap there as you can see in the video. So again, 32 inch cabinet, I'll give you my personal opinions on it. It is pretty cool. The only thing about this, and I'll bring you in closer, there are a couple things I personally would do different. I'm not really a fan of this apron setup. I'll probably do B-roll shots. I'm not really a fan of this apron setup. I like my, number one, I like my screen right up against the glass. As you can see with the B-roll, the screen is down a good, I would say, three inches. And me personally, I'm not digging it. Some people might say, hey Vic, you could take where the global VR is and you could put like an LED matrix and you could do with this kind of setup, you could do the side um, addressable LEDs on the sides. I have my personal opinions on that. If you want it, cool, I'll help you get it. But I personally don't like the, it's too, it's too flashy to me. But even if I was gonna go that route, I personally feel like the TV is just too down. Uh, again, there are people that play and have pins set up just like this and that is fine. That is your personal preference. Me personally, I, I see this apron. I could see the frame and it, it, in all honesty, it kills the vibe. It's, it, to me, it's like I'm looking at a TV screen. Again, I'm not making fun of anybody or I'm not talking down or anything, but that's just my personal opinion. I personally would rather have the screen up. If I was gonna make, and this is honestly kind of what's cool about this scenario, if I was gonna make a 32 inch cabinet, it's, it would have to go like how my regular pins are where I have no apron, it's gonna go right against the screen and I build the cabinet around the screen. As you can see with this apron setup, there is a good two inches on each side. And I mean, not including the apron and the back apron, but there are, there's a lot of empty space. There's a lot of black bars. If this apron wasn't there, it would just be bare. And again, to me personally, I'm not a fan of the way that looks. If you like it, that's cool. But me personally, I wouldn't. What I'm trying to get at is if I was gonna do a 32 inch cabinet, from where you see now, this that cabinet is gonna, it'll come in. I mean, the way this looks aesthetically, visually, like in person, it is cool. It is almost the size of a real pinball machine, but it is not the size of a real pinball machine. It is very, it's very in, very, uh, not narrow or I don't know what the word is, but it's very short, I guess you could say. That's what's kind of unique about the cabinet itself is that the cabinet is short. It's compressed this way, but the depth of it is almost like a regular pinball machine. So to me, it looks kind of, what's the wording? Oh, uh, I don't know, like it's like, like it's fat, like <laughs> not fat, but it's, it's like stretched and skewed. It's like inflated. That's what, maybe that's the word. It's like inflated. It went, it went like short, but then it went like, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, that's the only thing about this specific cabinet right now, but luckily 
With the amount of space from here, I was able to pull off the DOF install on this, which is the solenoids and the beacons and the strobes. You're gonna see everything. I should actually mention because it said beacons. He has beacons at home. He ordered them, he didn't deliver them to me, so he'll put the beacons on. So this will have beacons uh, when he sends me an updated video. But luckily it is deep enough to pull off wiring and all that. And I will dismantle this and I will show you the inside of it. All right, so I'm just gonna show you this real quick with the lights off only because like I have one light fixture right over the table so you kind of see the glare. But I just wanna show you again what I'm talking about with this apron, this kind of overlay that came with the global VR setup. Like I said, me personally, I would rather have this. You can see here, Indiana Jones, this already has an apron. The table has an apron itself. So you technically have two aprons going on here. I'm in a track mode on pinup, so it's gonna be flashing through. But that's the one thing I do not like visually. Global VR does have this monster's apron, but as you can see, you have apron plus another apron. It's, it, to me, it's just, it's not right. Right now it's showing off FX3. I'll probably boot a table just to show you what I mean. Okay, so I'll load up right now the tap from Mars real quick, just to show you again. I mean, again, this wasn't intended and this is just how I, I made it work. But as you can see again, you can see what I'm talking about with double aprons. You have your attack from Mars here, not to mention this is a 1080p play field. You really can't read the how to play instruction card on the screen, but we'll talk about that later on. Again, I'm looking at this right here. Again, you have basically a double apron, whereas like my normal pins, like the 50 inch ones that I build, that apron is here. It is where it should be here. So again, Taking this, I appreciate the challenge, and I appreciate that I, I hope I, I made the customer happy, but I honestly took this because I did want to see, number one, what a 32-inch build would look like, and number two, seeing how it's indented and all that. So I'm grateful for the experience, and I just hope that the customer enjoys what he got. Now, seeing like on the camera, you could see the reflection of this here. That's honestly where the angle of the camera is. If I'm standing in front of the pin, I don't really see it, I don't, it doesn't bother me. So let's put some coins in, just to kind of see what it looks like playing it, and we'll just see how it goes. So if I launch the table, hopefully I'm not in the way, I have the volume low. You can at least hear the dock. You can hear the solenoids going off. I will say one thing though, Playing on a smaller screen, I personally think I do play better <laughs> than playing on the big screen. I do notice that, like for example, I've been playing Cactus Canyon. I do notice that I'm actually playing better, meaning I could probably hit better shots. I'm not really an Attack from Mars player, but I would probably say it's the one pro about keeping a smaller screen. I'm anxious to do a 43 inch build. Because it is enjoyable. This is like a good size. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. I'm not going to knock it. It's, it's a good size. The only thing I don't like is that the cabinet is basically bigger than the 32-inch screen. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not a fan of the empty spaces and all that. Blood real quick, the getaway. Uh, so again, that was a big deal about the screen. The one thing I do really like, and that's where I'm trying to get a hold of somebody, at least in like the US and in New York or whatever, I do like the lock bar. I do like how this is. This is not your traditional lock bar though, um, but this definitely feels great and I do love the side rails. The big thing I do notice about the side rails though compared to ones that I personally use, which is yes, it's just metal angle, is that the side rail that I personally use is about an inch and a half. This way it covers the three quarter inch wood and it overhangs a little bit so it covers the frame of the TV. I'm trying to find somebody that is able to do that, but definitely one big thing that I do enjoy about this is the lockdown bar. The lockdown bar is a, is a, it's a beautiful feature. So before we continue, I should really tell you the specs on this thing. So this is a three screen setup. First screen is your play field screen. This is running a 32 inch Samsung 60 Hertz 1080p display. As far as the back glass, we do have a Westinghouse regular TV, kind of old school, dated TV. This is a 26 inch running 1080p, uh, 16 by nine aspect ratio. 
and the DMD, he, we put in the 24 inch Acer 1080p, same thing, 16 by nine display. So there is three screens. He's running a Dell Optiplex on this, which I will talk about details later on. It is running eight gigs of RAM, 500 gig SSD, and his graphics card is a 1050 Ti. As far as what I did on this and what he supplied me, we do have 10 solenoids. So we do have force feedback, so solenoid action. I hooked him up with a couple because I have for my other builds. I did hook him up with two strobes, two flashers. Sorry, I blanked out, but yeah, I only gave him the strobes and the flashers. He is supplying beacons. He has them at home, so he will install beacons on his own. I already have the wiring set up. All he has to do is cut and splice the beacons. And he does have the surround sound force feedback with two bass shakers. Pretty nice. Honestly, very nice to spec out. He also gave me an LED strip, so this does have underglow as well. Okay. So you kind of see it in the dark. Again, it's great. I have just a light right over the cabinet, so you might be getting a glare, but I figure in the dark it looks nice. Again, along with Dofflinks, it does communicate with buttons and stuff, coin button, exit button, the start button, all that is there. And I did a very unique thing when we talk about the coin door. This is cool. I'll probably give you a little sneak peek if you look carefully, but we will put a coin in. I believe it's a two quarter game. I don't know if you see how I inserted the coin. As you can see, the start can start. Again, Dofflings communicates with everything. So once you kind of go off, you might be able to see the strobes and the flashes. I have a strobe here and I have a flasher here and also one by my foot. So there is one strobe and one flasher under the cap. You can see flasher here. I'm not sure if we're gonna, oh, you do see the strobe there. We got multi-ball. I got multi-ball without even trying. And as you can hear, you do hear the 10 solenoids. I'm gonna be talking about the solenoids on this. They're very unique. And honestly, I dig them. You can hear how they sound. They feel great. We're gonna be talking about the solenoids. I will be dissecting this before the video ends. We'll take a look at the insides. So while the table's going, you might be able to hear the surround sound feedback. You can hear the ball drop. So again, there are four Dayton Audio surround sound feedback. Left, left, back, right, front, right. You can hear the ball drain. So you could hear the ball rolling. That is the big thing. I don't even know if you can see the play field on the. You don't really. <laughs> I set the camera up because I was really gonna talk about the back glass, but I did want the table to end so you don't hear the music playing. And we're good, cool. Let's talk about the back glass real quick. That's the big thing. Oh, we got a match, cool. I guess that is actually a free game. We do have a free game on that match. On camera, it's very rare to get a match, but we got a match on that, cool. Again, I do wanna talk about the back glass real quick on this because this is the big thing. Um, he did supply me with two other screens. They were, I believe they were 15 inch screens, but they were five by four or four by five or four by three ratio. And with that kind of ratio, it was tall, but narrow. He already had this Acer and I said, you know what? We're just gonna use this Acer. So in all honesty, yes, these screens are big. Off the bat, I already know, for example, just proportion wise, if I made the cabinet as a 32 inch cabinet, the 24 inch screen is already too big for a back glass. It's, it's, it's too big. I'd probably go down to like a 17 inch and then maybe like a seven or eight inch DMD. That I have to brainstorm. But yes, I do know the one thing that people are gonna look at and be like, whoa, whoa. Like they're too big, it's not proportioned. I understand, but if you really, really think about it, the stock back box, I didn't do any modifying to it. This is stock. The only thing I did is I did take the top off to fit the TV here, and I'm literally off by like, no joke, three quarters. Three quarters off. So I ripped off the top, and I basically tucked it back. I'll show you on B-roll. And uh, basically, I made the back box fit. So back box TV is indented, and then you do have the DMD full apron here. Now, unfortunately, with the way this cabinet was built, and if you do see and you look carefully, maybe I'll flash a picture, there was this 
kind of three quarter inch framing that was underneath, which you could clearly see before the customer, you know, when he dropped it off to me, you could see that. I could not take that off. That was honestly so nailed in. I would have destroyed the entire back box if I took that off. So because of that, this DMD is not sticking out. It is actually in. It's just to make it look good, I MacGyvered this. I should have said that in the beginning. I MacGyvered the hell out of this. I didn't use anything of mine. This right here, if you remember, I showed you the, the, the speaker panel and the DMD panel, that wood panel. That's this. I took a saw and I cut it. <laughs> so this is literally the DMD backs right here. And I knew it was gonna be too plain. I said, you know what? Let me hook them up with a strobe here and a flasher here. And I used the speaker grill to kind of hide it. I think it looks good. The only thing I don't like about it is that yes, it is coming out. It does stick out about a half an inch than the original cabinet. That's my only little thing about it. But I couldn't do anything about that because of that three quarter inch kind of U thing going on behind the scenes. I couldn't move that. So unfortunately that's, that's the way it was, but that's probably the only thing. But again, I just couldn't, I couldn't give it back to him with like the bear on this. It didn't look good. I couldn't even like enjoy it. I couldn't even play it. I was like, ah, oh, that back box is killing me. So I think I did a good job. Again, I didn't MacGyver it. I didn't use anything. I'm telling you when I, when I tell you I didn't use anything of mine in like the garage, nothing, everything he supplied me. I just used it and I'm, again, I, I'm a guy with the hell out of this thing. And again, just to make sure it did look good, I did, I basically added like a coat of black paint to these pieces of wood, just to make sure it was visibly good on the sides. This was kind of like bare wood once I cut it with the saw and I painted it black. Again, it look, I personally like the way this looks. Again, I did not get commissioned for it. I can't stress it enough because somebody's gonna look at this video and be like, oh, like you charge that much and you do that, like, please. I get emails all the time. <laughs> I just want to be very clear. I did not get commission to make this thing look good. I just couldn't give it back to him the way it is. Could it be better? Yes. If I was going to do it, it'd be, it'd be a whole new back box. Everything would be new on this. It would just be totally new, but that's what it is. Um, again, I did suggest to the customer to do new artwork. You will see like paint is peeling, especially in the promo video, but he's fine with it. It's not that bad. He's like, Vic, I just want to play. Like, I don't, you could, you, there could be a black cabin. I don't care. It could be a white cabin. I don't care. I just want to play. I'm like, all right, cool. That's it. You're done. So I do want to talk about the coin door. The coin door was a very big thing to see. It got me really excited, really hyped about like just seeing the physical coin door on a pinball machine was just, I was just excited because I, it's the first time I've really ever seen one in person. I did a couple of things to it and, um, I, I was I was really contemplating on doing this and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna make it work. Will what I did maybe possibly wear off in the future? It might, but let's go slow because I'm confusing the hell out of you, number one. Again, if you take a look real quick at the front panel, there is less buttons than I usually have. I usually have a start, an insert coin button or a coin button, an extra ball button and an exit button and you always have your plunger and all that there. So I am missing the extra coin, uh, extra ball button and the coin button. So you might be like, whoa Vic, what happened? What I did basically was that I actually have this button here. It's not even a button, it's your regular coin with the coin reject if the coin doesn't take it. But I did wire a ground and a button to insert a coin. <laughs> All you gotta do is push it. You don't have to push it that hard, but that's all you gotta do is push it. <laughs> so that is just the coolest thing, number one. Number two is if I open this door, it gives you the coin doors open. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. I hope you can. No, you can't, obviously not. I'm gonna have to reshoot that. But as you can see, I'm gonna close the door again. All right, so I'm gonna redo that again. I look like I need it, but whatever. Um, so again, if I tap this, it's gotta be this one. You could see I have one credit in it, I already had a half a credit, but I'm able to insert coins with this. And again, the cool thing is if I open the door, you do get the coin door high power to say, like that, I had to do something. Again, I'll show you what I did. Maybe you'll use it on your builds, but I had to get a little extra and a little fancy on it. But what's so cool is that these buttons do work. Again, I do have the volume to the actual cabinet on low, but these buttons do work. And that is awesome. That is just so cool to have the four buttons 
and the coin door open. I had to add that. Um, but yes, so I don't need a coin button because my little hat here is a coin button. Extra ball, I actually have linked to this here. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to take away this exit game. Um, I, I was gonna take like Clorox, but I was kind of scared. Um, I even tried to put a label over this exit game. It didn't work, you could still see exit game. So I basically have this button as the plunger. So it's plunger button, so there's basically two of them. And extra ball is linked to this. So, and also fire button. So tables like ACDC is the fire button. So it all worked out. I couldn't take the exit game out, but it all worked out. I did not want to leave exit game on this because he does have daughters, he has two kids. Like I wouldn't want one of them to accidentally hit it or get upset and like, you know, even you playing like pinball on edge, you kind of like whack it. And then imagine you exit the game, I had to take that out. Unfortunately, I could not remove the label. But that's pretty cool. I'll take you in closer now. We'll talk about the coin door. I'll show you what I did. Again, I MacGyvered the hell out of this. All right, so we're gonna kind of do this. I'm gonna open the door. I'll show you first the coin. Let me take this off the tripod. Again, this is why I say it might not last, but I think it will. I did use some good stuff. So basically, we do have the coins here. So if you do have a quarter, it will register coins. So it is a real coin mech. The real coin mech still works on both sides. So don't have to worry about that. But what I basically did here was that I hot glued one wire to this red kind of plastic and underneath it, if my camera focuses, there it is. You do have a ground here, hot glued here. So this right here, it just needs the lightest touch. And that is how I wired up basically the plastic coin return to get coined. I, it works, it's, that is glued in, that's not going anywhere. I'm not worried about that. And the last thing was to get the coin door Real coin doors really have this, it's really on the right. But basically this button is a normally closed state. And because of this little lip here, it holds the button closed. So in normal state, it's closed. Once the door opens, it lets go of the micro switch and then it opens the door there. So it is definitely how a regular, R it's, it's, it's amazing. Like again, I had to take two screws. I mounted the micro switch to the wall and that definitely is not going anywhere. That's screwed in. This is hot glued in, but I have high faith in that. That's not going anywhere. Again, it's just, it's so cool. Definitely, if you do have a real coin door, that's all you gotta do. Boop. So like I said, all you had to do is basically tap in to these micro switches here. So the original coin door micro switch is just extended out. Awesome, I'm so happy with that. That came out awesome. So since we have the coin door open, might as well take a look. I will take everything off, but we can take a look at the inside. Basically, really, the only thing that he'll ever touch is this gauge here, this kind of knob here for the volume. I did try to get Pinval to work on this cabinet, but for some reason, it will not work. Um, when I activated Pinval, Pinup would not recognize the KLZ board. It's a very odd. I've never seen that happen. Uh, I'm going to blame the computer. I spent maybe a day just trying to figure that out. But basically, he'll just have to come here and kind of make it louder and lower. But as you can see, clean stuff. You got the KLZ board right in front, so the nudge is great on it. You do have the surround sound amps there. He never really has to touch those. And again, we will open it up and take a closer look. All right, so we'll do a quick thing because I do have Cactus Canyon up. Might as well pump the volume. No, I'm going to keep it a little. I'm going to keep it low. Put a little bit, just so you can hear me. So as I'm playing the tables, majority of them work great. And again, with the Dell Optiplex, and again, you can see it on the camera, I put the, I turn the lights off so you can clearly see the screen. It does play fairly well. There is a handful of tables that just, the ball kind of lags, and uh, not, not major, but, you know, seeing from my pins, I notice it. But Cactus Cannon, great game. This is the FPW, so the Pinball Workshop guys. Um, great table, this is amazing. Again, we do have the analog plunger. Let me pull that back a little more. There we go. 
Awesome. So as you can see, there is no stutter right now. It, it looks great. On this table here, we do look great uh, and awesome. Cool. I'm gonna exit out. I'm gonna show you real quick. So you could see quickly there, you saw the window screen. Normally you don't see that. I'm gonna try to kind of breeze through the tables. And as you can see, you do get a little bit of a lag. Again, I'm trying not to speed up. I do want to talk so you know that it's not like the... As you can see, you do have a little bit of lag when I'm skipping through the tables. Not detrimental, not awful, but definitely that is due to the PC. That is like, I don't know what letter I'm on now. I'm on S. So I do want to play the forbidden table uh, just to show you that. Again, as you can see right now, I'm trying to go to the letter G. I'm using the Magna save to skip. So again, that is basically because of the computer. Maybe if he went up to 16 gigs of RAM, it wouldn't do that. But it's it's a given thing. It's again, that is why you know PCs cost the way they are now. Forget about the price inflation a lot, but there is a reason. I I did suggest to him a 1660, and let's do a 4K screen. He goes, Novik. I want to use this Dell Optiplex. I'm going to be talking about the Dell Optiplex and all that. So we're going to play a quick game of the newly released Forbidden. And again, with the KLZ board, you can take a look at the Marshmallow Man. If I shake the table, as you can see, there is real nudge. And just, just a great reason for that KLZ board. But all in all, as you can see, playing 1080p, it's it's good. The ball, there's no lag on it. There's no trails. It's it's good. It's fair. I think, like I said, there's a, a handful of tables where you will notice kind of like it is playable, but you will notice like some discomfort and all that. So again, as I'm moving the table, you can see Marshmallow Man. You can even see Slimer. Let me try to hold the ball if I can. There we go. So again, if I hold this and I nudge, as you can see, I'm literally throwing the table. Awesome, very cool. And that's KLZ board, again, potentiometer on this. I'm gonna do one table that I know gave me an issue and let's see if it was just a one-time thing or if it's gonna be a known thing. But we are gonna run the Flintstones. And we're gonna see how the Flintstones table loads up. Again, not too bad. I'm gonna definitely reboot the PC because the customer has to also know this. This is why I don't like Dell Optiplexes, but I'll get to that in a point. The boot up on this is a little bit of a pain, but it's also a safety thing. It's, you'll see once I, I go ahead with it. So I believe this is another VPW. You can hit Magna saves and it kind of messes around with LUTs. So that's pretty cool. Let's put some coins in. Cool. Here we go. So let's see if you can see the ball on this now. As I just put the camera down. So again, I don't know if you could see it on the camera, but that ball is like, it's stuttering. That ball, I'll play the table. I could enjoy the table, but you do see this kind of Jitter. Again, not all tables do it, but I did not test all 300 of my tables. Just something to keep in mind again, when you are building a V-pin and you go, damn, do I really need a thousand dollar PC? If you are looking at some fluid realism, you will want to invest in that. So again, I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna try not to like hit the ball. Yeah, you could, at least on my end, you could see. It. You could definitely see it compared to how the forbidden table was running. Let's do one more. I don't want to, I don't want to waste too much time, but again, I'm, I'm making this so you could physically see using a Dell Optiplex 1050 Ti 1080p, eight gigs of RAM. Now somebody might say, hey Vic, what can you do to fix that? You could lower the graphics settings. I do have this set to like medium, which still looks great, but also keep in mind that in my, like this table here is a 4K table. I am playing this on a 1080p screen. So maybe that's why this ball is jittery. I don't know, I personally have the 4K table on this. So that is also something to keep in mind and consider. 
The last thing I want to try before we start opening up the table is I'm going to try to launch Indiana Jones. New table. Uh, I forgot. I believe that's also a VPW table. I'm doing a lot of VPW stuff. Um, Indiana Jones, the pinball adventure. I want to make sure I'm launching the right one. Yes. I'm going to launch this. I don't know if this is going to actually launch. Launching this table, I launched it twice. The first time the whole play field was white. Like it didn't load. The second time I loaded it, it worked fine. So let's see what we get on the first load of Indiana Jones right now. Cool. It loaded. It is A-OK. -okay. It loaded. It's fine. So again, once in a while I was trying to load it and it kind of gave off this like ghost. It was basically a white play field with the ramps. You can see the ramps and everything. But as you can see, you could definitely compare it now. The ball roll on this is definitely nicer on this compared to the Flintstones. So again, it might be because the Flintstones is a 4K table. I can't really pinpoint exactly it. All I know is that on my pin, 4K pin, playing the Flintstones, it looks like this. It looks great. So again, a couple of things that could be in favor. What's great about a pinball table this size, I do like the nudge on this. I do feel like I have a good control on nudge. So I don't have to really, you know, worry about it like my big table. But I like it. Like I said, as you can see, the screen indented. Cool. Awesome. Do I want to try another one? The last one I'm going to try actually is World Cup Soccer. And then that is it. We're going to call it a day on this. I'll probably load up a FX3 table. Let's see. Yeah. So this actually loaded. Again, like I said, when I was first doing it, this was like a white play field. There was nothing on the play field. It was like, it was like the computer was still trying to render, but let's see. Ball looks good on this. And this is a very like, intense table there's a lot going on you got the wheel spinning this definitely is a cpu hungry table gpu hungry table but looks great looks good honestly this is a great table you can hear surround sound feedback on it again like i said i have the table set to low and uh you can hear it it's fine cool i like it All right, so I'll do some real quick FX3, brand new FX3 with Indiana Jones as well. It's pretty cool because you got Indiana Jones on the screen. You can hit the start button and it'll take them out to put them back in. And hitting the coin button will change the view. So that's pretty cool. Again, all that with the KLZ board. Now DOF activated. Again, for my stuff, the FX3 needs like 30 seconds for the DOF to activate. Um, my version of um, FX3, for some reason, the flippers don't go off, but everything else for DOF goes off, but my flippers, I don't know why. I do have it all assigned correctly, but real quick, eh, the ball seems okay. It's not brutal. You do see it. I mean, me personally, I do see a little bit of a lag, but it's not awful. It's not brutal. For what this customer had, and he had it lying around, this now is an enjoyable pinball machine. He told me that his wife was getting pictures. He's like, oh man, she can't wait to play it. So it is definitely an enjoyable now. It's definitely cool to see. So now real quick before we open this up, on the builds I always include the DOF switch. So you are able to play your pinball machine at night. You don't have to have the solenoids going off and such. So just one quick flip and DOF is reactivated. So that is definitely an awesome little feature to always have. I always put that on all the pinball machines. All right, so real quick, again, we're gonna open up the table. Just a couple of things real quick. Let's take a look at the back box. Cause some people are gonna be like, whoa, Vic. Yes, like I said, I'm MacGyver the hell out of this. This was the standard back box, back plate. This was stapled in. Um, so I made it like this, so he doesn't have to worry about, you know, anybody touching power and all that. But there is a reason why I have this cut out here. 
And that is because his back box TV, back glass, it does require you to power it on. So I did leave this opening so he could press the power button. So only one personal thing, I do have like the LED strip here that when we, when he gets it, because the back box is coming off, he'll be able to just basically stick the LEDs on. So that's why this is here. The only thing I personally did not really enjoy about this table was the speakers. We are using the stock. These are like the regular arcade speakers. They're not that great. You do hear like a lot of distortion. I personally am not a fan of them, but it is what it is. Um, right here, you can see here on the back, this is the DOF switch right there. So again, the customer does have the back door here, but he'll put that on when he uh, gets it. And like I said, nice, cleared it out. We got the LEDs on the side, so it'll do a nice little back glow. So now the one little last remark about this back box. Sadly, whoever originally had it, they took off the clamp here. I actually have two screws holding this back box down. The original way he had it, it was basically freestanding. Adding the weight of the TVs, I felt like somebody, you know, if you shook the table, this could go. So I did add two screws, so this is screwed in. We don't have to worry about it ever falling on somebody. So he'll uh, get a whole video on how to put it together and all that. But yes, this right here is bolted down. This is pretty good, although we don't have the actual clamp for it, but it is all good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually turn off the system. I'm gonna make this on camera so the customer can see. This is one big reason why I hate Dell Optiplexes. Number one, whoever had this Dell Optiplex before, like I said in my first video, it was true. Somebody bent the pin to jump the power button. Unfortunately, I was not gonna take that risk of unbending it because it's, no. Somebody bent it. There was now no way to put a power button in. Yes, you could get that USB big red power button thing from Amazon. I don't like those. Not to mention, I don't know where you're going to put it. So unfortunately, the only way to turn off this pin is you have to grab a keyboard, you have to exit out of the pin up, and you have to shut down. But the other big thing about this Dell, and that's why I don't like Dells, is you're going to see the startup process on this. Again, whoever had this Dell before, usually again, a Dell Optiplex is in a frame and all that. The big thing that people don't understand with Dell Optiplex is that when you dismantle a Dell Optiplex, such as you're taking away like the fan or um, you take away like the power button, Dell will give you warning signs when you first power up saying, hey, it's missing the fan or hey, it's missing the power button and it just doesn't boot directly into Windows. You have to press a couple of keyboard keys, which unfortunately in this state, in this situation, he's got to do it. So real quick, he did supply me with this kind of cool keyboard. You gotta just press X. When you're on pinup, you just press the letter X. It'll exit out. You got the touchpad, mouse click, and your basic shutdown. So I'm gonna right now reboot the system on camera. We're gonna go through everything so everybody can see and understand. Basically right now, we got no signal. Wait for like the Samsung TV to show up with no signal. Normally, I would be able to hit a power button. No. Right now, we're gonna actually take, a, the, the power plug has a switch. You're gonna turn the power off. If I turn the system on right now, the Dell will not boot. You have to give it about maybe 15, 20 seconds to let the power totally die down, which he rarely will do this, because you know normally he'll play it, shut it down, go to bed, but right now for this video, I have to wait 15 seconds. Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna turn on the switch. Screen's gonna turn on and your Dell's gonna turn on. But the big thing is you have to turn on the back glass. Be sure to come back here. There is a red light on the back glass. You can't see it here, but I can see it back here. You wanna see the red light. I'm gonna let this PC boot up and you're gonna see exactly why I hate Dell's. <laughs> Especially the older Dell's. So right now, again, it's kind of cool. It is a good fail safe. Because if he does not have this back glass on, your back glass will now turn to this. And when you do turn it on, you have to now go into a couple of settings. So right now off the bat, we have a Dell error. We have an alert, air temperature sensor not detected, power button cable failure, front IO cable failure. When you dismantle the Dell, you have to keep every pin. Please remember that. So it basically says here, Press F1, so he's got to press the function, and F1. 
we're gonna go through this. Again, I'm not making fun of everybody, but this is why I don't like Dells, and this is what you get for your Dell. So again, the big thing is at least the fail safe is if that came up, you could be like, oh crap, I forgot to turn on the back glass. You have to turn that on. If the back glass is not on, if you launch like VPX, you're gonna have to go into the B2S setup and adjust your monitors. As you can see, I pressed F1, we still got an error. Hey, power button cable failure, front IO cable failure. I gotta press F1 again. And luckily, it's all you just gotta do it two times. You have to press F1 two times. I'm gonna ask the customer when he gets this, try not connecting the keyboard. Maybe it'll bypass all that, but you still need the keyboard because you have to exit and turn off the system with this. Please do not power off your system with the PC on. You will damage hard drive like that. So once the system boots up, pinup will launch, and now you are good to go. Again, if that back glass was not on, it would jump to this screen, and now you will have to call me or I'll make another separate video for him, and you will understand how it is. That's why me personally, I try to aim for all the screens, any screens I get, it's gotta turn on once you give it power. Same thing when it comes to my arcade cabinets, I always search for TVs, even if that means it's gotta be more expensive, that's what it is because you as a customer, imagine you going, oh shit, I forgot to turn on the back glass. Uh, no, to alleviate that, I spend the extra couple bucks and I get it. That's why I do get the ViewSonic 32 inch framelits because I know the ViewSonic will boot up. Yes, there are other monitors that will boot up once you get power to it, but it's an important thing. As you can see right now, we're gonna turn off, we're gonna dismantle, we're gonna open up the cabinet so you guys can see it. I'm gonna basically come here, power, shut down, and we're good to go. So you will get your keyboard and awesome, cool. I can't wait to show this off. So this is what's pretty cool, basically with the coin door. I already have it unlatched, but there are two latches here. You can basically pull out the lockdown bar. And the big thing is that you do want to be careful. You want to at least keep your thumb on the glass because that's what's pretty cool that this is using real glass. Once you pull this out, you kind of just take out the button fire button. Now you can set this on the side. I don't want to put it on the floor. We'll put it there. Making sure that you don't let go of the glass because that'll just slide out. Tuck the button in and again that's what's so cool with this cabinet is that it is using real glass. What can I say about the real glass? It's real glass. Um, do I notice any difference compared to the plexiglass? Do I notice any difference with the plexiglass? No. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna be that guy. But I think I could say that because this screen is not up against the glass. I think that's why I could say that. So you take the apron off. You can see real quick, I'll take you in closer just to show you real quick. Basically, I had to add these two shims here to keep the TV level. The TV was more on a down slope, so without those shims like that, it wouldn't really, it didn't look good. So that right there, it keeps it level, it's cool. We're gonna take the TV out. There's basically two wires here, one and two. And woo, look at that wire. <laughs> so again, what was really cool about this, wiring is wiring. You will get wires with V-Pin. He ordered me a box of 250 foot wire. I would say I used a good half of that box. That box now is half the weight. So there is a lot of wiring when it comes to pinball, no matter what the size is. The biggest challenge for this specific machine was it's pretty compact. So keeping everything nice and neat, yes, this is neat. That's probably the best way I could do it with such a tight space. Now you can see real quick, we got the three power supplies along the wall there. Again, the person that he purchased it from definitely saw my video because he did have the same smart board wired. He had the LED whiz, and he had the daisy chain for the power supplies. I would, I'm would i gonna give myself a tap on the back. I believe he watched my video and basically set that up. But he did mess up on the solenoids. So check it out. The solenoids, very interesting. I'm gonna see if I can grab, oh, here we go. Let's grab a quick model number for you guys there. So it's a Packard contact rating per pole C14A. I like these. I like these a lot. They click. They, they, they're good. 
I do like these. They are pretty close and comparable to the Sane Smart. The big thing, as you can see, the original builder has the diode. And he marked it negative and positive. Unfortunately, on like four of them, they were not wired correctly. This was really the positive side. And sure enough, this blue. So you just got to be careful with that. But he did give me the diodes. The diodes were rewired. I had to just do, I had to redo three of them because I burnt out three of them. They literally poof, popped. But on the note of the solenoids, as you can see here, I have the actual slingshots on the metal bar awesome this is an awesome feature you do hear the different click compared to the other solenoids same thing back here the back center it is on that bar so that solenoid fires the only thing and again i don't know the only thing about this solenoid is that this is exposed i don't have power on i don't know if this gets power so i definitely want to be careful when you do this and you touch it but you don't want to touch it I don't know if there's actual power here, so I did make sure that nothing's really close to it so it doesn't like spark off. But I do like the solenoids on this. Um, you do see the Dane audio, so there are four. A little tight, honestly, when I was doing the Danes, the surround sound, I'm like, mm, you could probably get away with just putting two, but he had the four, I put them in. Out of the two, um, the two base shakers, I have them basically underneath in the back. This right here is this plate. You see this plate here? I have two in the back. I didn't want to put them too close to the front because the KLZ board is there and I didn't want it to spaz out. But you do have the KLZ. That's probably the only spaghetti you really got. Only because of the coin door. Adding that coin door, it added more kind of wires and all that. It has this whole unplug thing going on. It has the, the clip. Sorry, I'm getting tired. Um, but yeah, that's probably the only time you see the, the spaghetti. And again, this is the launch ball there. We do have the sound card, the external sound card. Again, LED whiz uh, and the potentiometer. So we got the potentiometer. The big thing noting is the plunger on this cabinet is small. That is not your standard length plunger. So the throw on this is definitely way shorter than what I have on my personal pins. But same setup with the zip ties and it works. Awesome. Cool. So yes, no matter what the size is, there is always pinball wiring. You can see he did give me the breakout. So this right here is going, for example, the strobe and I have two flashers here. So the R and the B channel. You could see the Dell there with its failure warnings, same smart board, all that. Again, taking a look back here. This was dangling on the last video. I basically screwed it down so this doesn't move anymore. You do need this connected. Again, you could see the Dane Audios. You do see another block out board. And basically I have here because he this back box is coming out separate. I basically only have about four or five wires that are gonna be separated and I have them there. And he'll have to put those in because those are gonna come out. I don't like shipping these down like a real pinball machine, I get kind of scared. Um, this right here is a back panel, but you can see basically the break out there and nothing else really. Everything else is just well hidden. I'm trying to get the camera in. Yeah. There you go. Well, there you guys have it. Yes, I, I, sh I have to shoot the promo video, so I'm gonna turn everything on, but it looks like when it first came to me, but there you guys have it, the global VR is alive again joshua bro it is coming to you man i hope you enjoy your pin Whew.